Hello everyone. Here I will discuss about image formation by eye. So if you like it, please like, share and subscribe it. In my last video, I have discussed about the structure of eye. So we have seen the different parts of the eye as conjunctiva, cornea, iris, pupil, ciliary muscles, retina and others. So when the light rays after reflecting from an object, it enters our eyes. So what happened? The light rays, it passes through different layers. So first of all, it passes through the conjunctiva, then cornea. The cornea is actually responsible for about 60% of the eyeball's light ray bending capability. The cornea's refractive power bends the light rays in such a way that they pass freely through the pupil, which is the sight changing hole in the iris. So, the bending of light rays are possible because of the curve of the cornea as well as the change in refractive index as light moves from ear into the cornea and into the aqueous fluid between cornea and the iris. So the cornea and lens of an eye acts together to form a real image on the light sensing retina. So I am coming to that a little bit later. So first of all, so when our eyes are actually made up of convex lens attached to ciliary muscles. Now this ciliary muscles either contract or relax depending upon the distance of light rays from where it is reflecting. When, our, when light enters our eyes, how the eye focuses light? When distant objects are viewed, the ciliary muscles relax. Thus, the lens becomes thin and elongated. So, relax means it pulls. the. There is a stress on the ciliary muscle. So, it pulls. The ciliary muscles pulls the lens. So, what will happen? It will become thin. It will become elongated. And the lens will become less convex. So, the focal length increases. Now, when we are viewing a nearby objects, the ciliary muscles that holds the eye lens in place, it contracts. And the lens becomes rounder and thicker. So the focal length decreases. So this ability of our eye to adjust in its focal length for nearby objects as well as distant objects to form a sharp image on retina to see it clearly is called accommodation. The retina is a complex part of the eye and its job is to turn light into signals about images that the brain can understand. So, as because the front part of the eye is curved, it bends the light creating an upside down image on the retina. Thus, a real inverted image forms on the retina. Retina just acts like a screen on which the light rays are falling and on the retina number of photoreceptor cells are present. So, I will discuss in short the different photoreceptor cells. So, Rod cells and cone cells, these are the different photoreceptor cells present on the retina which are responsible for capturing the light and forming the signals to create the image. The rod cells which are present on the retina are actually elongated and composed of photosensitive pigment called rhodopsin which are actually purple colored. The rod cells are sensitive to dim light but no color sensitivity is seen here. It enables us to see in darkness also. So if there is insufficient rhodopsin, it results in night blindness. Means we are not able to see in dim light or in night time. So we can we are able to see in dim light because of the presence of these rod cells. Now another type of cell is present that is the cone cells. The Cone cells are more abundant in fovea centralis, means more in number compared to rod cells. And each cone cell consists of photosensitive pigment called iodopsin, which are violet colored. Now these cells are sensitive to both bright light and color. So we are able to see the color of an object because of the presence of these cone cells. Now iodopsin, which is present in the cone cells, it gives the color vision. So, if there is insufficient iodopsin, it results in color blindness. So, we can't differentiate color. The person will not be able to differentiate between different colors if there is deficiency of iodopsin. The optic nerve is a bundle of more than a million nerve fibers that carry visual message from our eyes to the brain. It just works like the highway connecting your brain and your 
eyes. The brain interprets these signals and processes the information such that we see the object erect. So the image which is actually forming real and inverted on the retina that becomes erect and real on the brain. So when we are seeing an object, when we are viewing an object, we are actually seeing a erect image and the real size of the image. The, in this figure, the real and inverted image is actually forming on the retina of our eyes. But our brain turns the image the right way up and we are seeing the erect and the real image. So this is how the image formation takes place in our eyes. Persistence of vision. The time for which impression or sensation of an object by our eye stays in the eye is called persistence of vision. It is about one sixteenth of a second. So this is all about for the time being. In my next video I will discuss about defects of vision. Thank you.